Robin Crane. Welcome to the Financial G-Spot. And I'm here again with Joey and Frank. If you haven't seen the episode, make sure to go back and watch it. Very interesting episode. Yeah. Is it worth taking out a loan to pay him back? That's really... Well, is it worth taking out a loan? Will that solve your problem? A personal loan, where I can afford the payments for 80 bucks. Can you get a personal loan? That's my question. Can you get a personal loan? I can get a personal loan. Okay, so here's what the answer is to that. It is worth looking into. But you gotta stop borrowing. It, like it, the bleeding has to stop. You can't just go get a loan and then get more loans, get more loans. So the the income has Being to. Stop I don't think you're gonna get a loan that easy. What has well, to? Well, don't worry. Being... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Pause, See, pause, pause. Joey and Frank are friends, and Joey's been borrowing money from Frank for quite a while. And at this point, he actually owes him thirty-eight hundred dollars unless something has changed since the last time I spoke to them. So I want to go in and find out if anything changed at all, if things are getting better, if things are getting worse, because before it was ruining their relationship. If you loan money to a friend, you can expect that you might not get be getting paid back. Loan money to a friend, and there are no terms, there's nothing just to make you pay that money back, you may not do it, right? We all have excuses and reasons, so why we don't we can't come up with the money. So I want to find out what's going on with these guys. Is the relationship better or worse? Has anything changed? Is he still loaning him money? Is he still borrowing? Or is he paying him back? So let's go find out what's going on. Come, let's check it out. I'm excited to see these guys. Kind of miss them. Hey, how are you? Hey, Robin. Frank, good nice to see you again. You. Joey, how are you? Hi, how are you? How are you doing? Nice to see you. Yeah, you too. So what's been going on with you guys? Well, there's been a slight improvement. Um, we it was thirty eight hundred dollars that he owed me, but now it's down to thirty seven and fifty. Hey, that's progress. That's yeah, great. It's, it's been some time though. He's paying me like twenty five dollars a week, but it's not consecutive. Okay. So hold on a second. Before before you guys talked to me, and that was only a few weeks <coughs> ago, he wasn't paying you anything. I was. It was pretty tough. I was still borrowing it. And he was still borrowing money. But I stopped. I took your advice. No more enabling them. That's it. It's cut great. off. Great. So what, what, let's start with this. What are you happy about that's happened so far? I'm happy that he still is seeking employment, but it's... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. We're going to get to the butts. You're happy he's seeking employment. What else? That he is still my friend. He's still your friend. I still okay, think of him huge. as a son. You know? That's great. And I like him. So, you know, I'm not letting up on him. Not giving up. Okay, so that's what else is great about what's happened since the last time we spoke? Well, I think the tension is easing up between us. Great, why do you think that is? Because he's trying a little bit harder. Okay, and how but about he still, you? He still builds me up and he lets me down. That's it. Wait, we're only on positive here. Right, Very right. interesting. So, so he, the tension is lower. Yeah. Okay, and what else? What else? Uh, I don't what think there's much great? more I can say, you know. We, we see each other almost every other day, and okay. we, I know he's trying. Okay, great. That's the important thing. Okay, great. Positive. So that's amazing. So I want to, what I want to do, <clears throat> what I want to do is take time to celebrate the success because it's very easy to not be satisfied and to always want more. And I get that. And part of it is that you didn't set up any parameters or any terms as to here's the money, you're gonna get this amount and you're gonna have to pay me back in this period of time. That wasn't set up. So now all we can, we can't go back and change the past. What we can do is work with what you want in the future. So those are the things that you're happy about. What are you happy about that's changed, Joey? Uh, well, I'm happy that um, he's off my back. Uh, a lot and um, he sees you know he, he's, he knows I'm trying uh, he trusts me so let's okay great I think he trust trusts is a, you trust that's is, better trust than he's off my back well, I'm not sure I always trust he's always wearing these dark glasses I was going to ask about the dark glasses I don't know classes. if he's rolling his no, eyes I, honestly in a situation like this I feel intimidated um, most of the time we hang out we're not talking about money uh, I just feel intimidated I mean I don't have to wear the glasses I, I wear right, I kind of I kind of hide behind the glasses great thank um, you for being honest I got what, what, are those, what kind of security are those glasses well, giving? First of all, these glasses are um, subscri uh, subscriptions. Subscription? I need to see. Okay. Um, prescription. Prescription. Um, I, last, I got a little teary eyed last time I was on with you guys. I didn't, I didn't know if you know it. But, uh, Thank you. Because we've been together, you know, we've been friends for so long, we're talking the truth with you. And I got a little choked up, a little teary eyed. What choked you up the most? Uh, just hearing it. Just hearing, the, <laughs> just, just hearing the whole thing. What just, specifically? What was going on in your head? What were you saying to yourself, and what were you? I thinking? felt like I, I think I felt like a loser, and I felt that I, I, I wanted to make good with him, and I can't. You know, it's like my hands were tied. You know, and, you're not uh, a loser. I mean, 
not, not a you're, loser. You're good, but everybody has goodness in law. It's just a matter of responsibility, right? Responsibility. I what, just I what felt were you like in high school. My, I was alright in high school. My grades were good in high school. I was alright. Okay, so tell me what else. So you got choked up. This is very important. So let him talk. Sure. Um, I was emotional last show, okay, and that's basically when I get emotional. I put these things. In. Okay, so that's, awesome. you know, but you started with them last show as well. So what what else made you extremely emotional? Because money is an emotional thing. You're not the only one. Um, um, but it was it wasn't just about the money. It's I, about what the what, friendship, uh, hearing, hearing it. You know, because you don't always sit down and talk about it. We brought everything out last show, and uh, okay. it was hard to hear it. It was hard to sit down and listen to it. Um, so even though it was hard to hear it, and um, you got choked up, and you felt like a loser, um, what did you feel like you got from that eight minute? By the way, it was an eight minute conversation. A lot. I got. I really did. Get, I got a lot out of it. Uh, I think I left here. I hit the floor running, basically, so to speak. I went right out. I, I, um, I fill out job applications. I always do fill out on job applications. I uh, I got a, a good job at um, Nathan's Hot Dogs in the mall. Holiday help. So you got the job. No, I. No, you they, oh. <laughs> no, they liked me, but you know what? It's nice to know that they. they Why did. didn't you get the job? I agreed to wear the uniform, but I wouldn't wear a hair net. And I know it's Whoa. it's a silly hair net. Why? So why you agreed to wear, you wear like the like a, uniform, but you wouldn't I wear wouldn't the hair net. So we're gonna we're gonna take a break in just a minute. But when we come back, I want to find out what other jobs you applied for, what happened, what's going on, and and what are you doing to potentially sabotage your success so let's find out so when we come back i'm going to actually keep frank here but i want to find out what's going on with frank how the relationship has changed and how we can make it better so i'll be right back this is robin crane you're watching the financial g-spot on the whatever it takes network welcome back you're watching the financial g-spot on the whatever it takes network i'm robin crane here with joey and frank so I was going to sit and talk to Frank for a sec, but I actually want to talk to Joey because I'm noticing, as you probably are as well, there's a lot of emotion involved, a lot of fear, a lot of anger, frustration. I don't know which emotions, but I want to find out and want to get to the bottom of this. So Frank, would you mind giving us a little bit of time? Sure. Thanks, Frank. So Joey, tell me, what, what's the biggest, when you said that you felt like a loser and you got choked up, what did it really like what did it bring on in you like what did it remind you of what how did it make you feel what came up for you at that time it, it made me feel like my best isn't good enough you know my best isn't good enough and uh you know it made me, it made me feel down on myself it made me feel like i was hurting my, my my friend uh you know he's laughing a lot about it he's smiling about it he's being nice about it but i know it's it's interrupted his marriage i don't want to interrupt his his um, obviously his wife's probably on him about it. Okay, so um, what's what's the truth though? So you're saying you felt like your best isn't good enough. Are you really doing your best? I'm doing my best for myself, but I wasn't. I'm not going the extra step to pay him back. You know, I'm, I'm able you, to. Whoa! Stop for a sec. That's huge. You're doing the best for yourself. And, and my family. And my family. Okay, okay. so can I um, can I get to where it might hurt? So I read on your, you, you emailed in and we asked like how things are going and you said that you um, you are now gambling only once a month, right? I cut, I cut it down a lot. Okay, so tell me how it was before it's not, because it's before that. It's not big that, bucks. I mean, it's okay, like, well, you know, it's it's. Tell me darts, how it was. You know? Tell me how it was. I was going down there maybe two or three times a week and then uh, you know, OTV, okay. I was going down there once in a while um, in the hopes of winning big and if I did win big I'd obviously pay him back the first thing on my list so so how much how much were you gambling monthly uh, sure. not I mean to me three hundred dollars is not a lot compared to some of my buddies okay. uh, or maybe pause, about pause, three. Pause. okay so here's the reality check you're it's going down gambling hold on now I'm not judging you it's I'm doing this I'm doing this because I want to help you you know that right okay. I really want to help you and the reason I asked you back is because I saw in you this desire to really get help and not just like take this as something as, as, as so light and not serious. I mean, you have a wife, you have a family, this is something, you have a best friend that you don't want to lose. So I want, it, I want you to come present to the truth right here. So you said $300 isn't that big of a deal. If you look at it as an entertainment, it's a, it's a, I mean, if you go to the movies, you know, it's my entertainment. It's my Do you outlet. have any other entertainment? 
Do you do no, anything I mean, else? No. No. Be, uh, aside from that, no. I don't. You know, I take my kid to a game okay. or something like that. So no. right now you're making a choice, or you were because you were I was you were making a choice. Making a I choice. Back on that dress so thing. that's awesome. Right. So that's what I want to celebrate. It's so not you an were, addiction. It, it's entertainment. That you know, I keep saying that. Okay. So do you, have you ever lost more than three hundred dollars in a month? No, I keep. I, I'm smart with it. You know, like when I, if I was to go to Atlantic City, I have three hundred dollars in my pocket. And that's it. Okay. I'm going home. So you 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 gamble three hundred dollars. You used to gamble three hundred dollars, and at that point in your life, you weren't paying Frank back. In fact, you were borrowing money from him. Exactly. Okay. So now you made a drastic change because this is something you do. I'm not saying you're addicted to it, but you like to do it. It's you fun. think of it as entertainment. It's fun. Socially. Socially. Okay, great. So now you cut back to once a month. No, maybe, maybe twice, three times a month. But not, you know, I'm not going crazy like I was. You know, okay. I'm bringing so how out much maybe. Do, uh, how much might you? I haven't really figured out. out. I, I would say probably half that. You know, half that. Okay, so you're still putting out $150 a month or a week or? No, about know? a month. About a month. Okay. Yeah, weekly. You know, I'm only. Okay, so let me, let me ask this. So, so that's fine. I'm not, I'm not judging you on it. What I want you to do is recognize where your money's going and the choices that you're making and to recognize that you have a choice. Tell me about your jobs, what's happened with your jobs. Well, I'm still doing like odds and ends. Like right now, it's So you full. wouldn't take the job with Nathan's hot dogs because they were going to make you wear a hairnet. You know, How much money were you going to get per month? Wage, you know, really, How much money would you get per month? Per month, month yeah. maybe yes. uh, 1200 bucks a month maybe looking at, you know. Whoa! So you could have had twelve hundred bucks a month and basically nights, yeah. extra right. that you could pay. You could have paid Frank off in about three months. Right. I think. What was so happening? the choice you made. I just want to recognize it again because I want to. I want to cause some pain. I am. I am purposefully trying to stab a knife into you because I want to knock it out of you right. to like decide that this is something you have to change. Not because of Frank. It's not about Frank. It's about you and your family. You're telling me that you're doing the best you can possibly do for yourself. And it's because you're getting comfort and some feeling that you like in immediate and in, in, in immediately, I should say. But then you won't do something that you know will help yourself, you know will help your family, you know will help your friendship with Frank. Twelve hundred dollar difference because you have to wear a hairnet. Tell me what's really going on. I I think I mean, I don't belittle myself, but I think I, I didn't I felt like an idiot putting the thing on. And I put it on, I got a few laughs from people, and I gotta stand out in the middle of the wall. Do you feel like an idiot that you're borrowing from your friend? I do, but I do feel that if Nathan's hot dogs will hire me. Uh, it was a positive for me. I felt really good. I feel like I can go out now with some. And by the way, feel good about I myself. do want. I do want you to recognize it. Like I really am impressed. You're going out there and right. trying things. Well, I am. I'm What's great is that you are going out and you're 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 putting yourself out there. You're doing you're doing different things. You're trying to make more money, but there's something sabotaging your success. One one thing that is happening is on um, all these job resume, all these job applications, with resumes, and I don't have a job history. Most of the stuff I've done is all the books. Okay. Excuse. Ends. Keep going. It's not an excuse. And then like my it's an excuse. my track record, like I don't have the best track record. You know, like okay. with my uh, not that I was arrested, but I have a lot of. If they look up my background checks, okay. you know, it's not excuse. the best. Excuse. I'm um, just saying it is an All right, an well, excuse. these are things that knock me down when I go on job interviews, okay. you know. They want to know where I've worked before and this I and gotcha. that. And, and uh, they want proof of, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they want to talk to my last employers and stuff like that. So I pretty much am self So what do you think the biggest thing holding you back to having what you want right now? Um, I, I guess I, I got to, uh, what would you call it, man down? Man up. Man up, no man down. What like do you I, mean? Because I think uh, you know I, I'm not that I'm too tough, but I, I'm too embarrassed to work certain jobs, or it's not me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I got to become more uh, flexible. You know? What if the very fact that you won't take a job where you wear a hairnet is actually saying what? that you you don't have enough enough confidence to be? Who you really are to not let people say things about you and let that bother you just because you are making a choice that's going to help you and your family. It would help. I think if I was in dire needs, I would probably. You wear are in dire needs. That's what you don't. That's what you don't realize. This is my first couple of weeks of looking for and, a job. Yeah. Now, I mean, for, for a study job with steady income. Um, so my my thing is, is I think if, if I was getting as far as I did working there, I could find something without a hand. You know okay. what I'm saying? I didn't Great. Want to just so jump we got to cut job. to a break. So what I want to say is that awesome. You're making progress. You're doing things. You're getting out there. But you're also belittling the problem. 
You're telling yourself that everything is gonna be okay. And you're not present to the real pain of what's going on. When we get back, I'm gonna bring Frank back up. This is Robin Crane. You're watching the Financial Juice Spot on the Whatever It Takes Network. Welcome back, this is Robin Crane. You're watching the Whatever It Takes Network. This is the Financial G-Spot. I'm here with Joey and Frank. And um, well, one thing I, I just wanted to say quick is uh, with the hairnet, it's not so much wearing a hairnet, like I'm sitting here wearing a hairnet, nobody sees me. If I wasn't in my I town, you. you know, people yeah. that know me, my kids go to that mall. My kids' friends go to that mall. Okay, so here's I what I want you people, to do. I don't want I get kids it. to be affected. I get it. There's a reason, there's yeah. always <laughs> a reason behind what you do. And here's the reason you're doing that, is that you're associating more pain to whatever that thing is that you're not doing than to the thing that you are doing. What I mean by that is you're not wearing the hairnet because you associate more pain to wearing the hairnet than getting than not paying him back twelve hundred dollars or having twelve hundred dollars more in your for your family. I'm not sucking it up, so to speak, but you know. Yeah, you, no, you're associating more pain to it. It's more painful to see your kids walk by with you in a hairnet, you looking like a loser, exactly. than actually being a loser to not pay your friend. Right. That's my, the my, truth. The visual so, of what I'm doing to make the money. So is, is what you have to force yourself to do is to create a painful experience in your mind. That but why is it so painful to not pay him back? It's not about the fact that he needs the money, even though he probably does. It's not about the fact that you guys are happy, it's ruining your friendship, even though it probably is. It's about the fact that you are belittling the truth about your situation. You're pretending that it's not painful when it is. You're 47 years old, you have a wife and two kids? <coughs> uh, three kids. And three kids. You have to associate to the pain of that. If you don't step up as the man that you're, you are meant to be, that I know you could be, that, that has to be painful to you. So what I want you to do when you leave and I talk to Frank, I want you to take out your smartphone, make notes. I want you to write the reason why if you do not change, if you make excuses to everything, excuses to being the hairnet or being the reason you told me online that the reason you didn't get, you lost another job is because you walked in um, with mud on your shoes and so you got fired and there was one more and there they was an excuse to, to that. To and they wanted to be paid. Excuse, That's excuse, excuse. Hold on. So there's always an excuse. I get it. You need to get so associated to the pain. If I keep making excuses, if I keep believing that everything in the world is happening to me instead of me happening to it, what will become of me and my family? I want you to go so deep that it brings you to tears. If you're not back here with a list of things that will bring you to tears, then don't come back. She's right. She's right. Force yourself. It hurts. It sucks. It's gonna feel like crap, and it's gonna change your life. Frank, I know you want to talk about Joey and everything he's doing wrong, but I'm not gonna let you. Okay. I want you to talk about you. I have five money types. Just without me telling you too much about them, I want you to tell me what you think you are. There's Spendthrift Sally, who just spends frivolously, spends money all the time. Cheap Chip, who, who's frugal and doesn't like to spend money and likes to save and even gets some anxiety when he spends money. Over generous Olivia, who likes to give and give and give and feels like she's generous. And I say she, he, they're not really, you know, gender specific, but I, just, I usually use dolls and have fun with it. Over generous Olivia gives and gives and gives. She loves to feel generous. She loves like she's, she has a part in this world and she feels significant by giving and contributing. Um, and then there is um, delusional Dan, who believes everything's going to work out, um, that there's always an opportunity for more, that sometimes he has showy cars or nice like electronics and things like that, even though he doesn't have the money. A bit delusional and also likes to invest in opportunities. And the last one is avoid or out. Avoid the truth. Don't look at what's really happening. And um, bury your head in the sand because it's too painful. What do you think yours is? I'm the last one. I really am the last one because he just keeps building me up. And you know the story. You know that he had no father. And I've taken him on as a son. And I, I care about the guy. He's got a really good So what heart. are you avoiding? I'm, I just wish he would be better in life and take more responsibility. I know $3,800 is Wait, just... Wait, hold on. You want to be his father figure. You want I him want to, to... Hold on. You want him to take more responsibility. 
But you're not taking responsibility for loaning him the, him the money. I'm trying to teach him a lesson. I'm trying to teach him get some self pride. Pay people back. Respect the community. Respect yourself. Give back to the but community. But how are you teaching him that? By bitching at him? Well, I don't bitch at him. Yes, I, you do. Uh, yes, you do. That's an avoider out. That's a lie. You, we have it on camera. You're constantly nagging him and telling him how he should be and what he should be and how he should change and how he needs to step up, step up. And then you'll take it back and then give him a compliment. You're not that bad. But you absolutely... It's like it's like daddy's. I'm a, I'm a sap in a way too. You know, it's it's like I, I take it on the chin. So you what know, else do you avoid in your life that's hurting you? I I don't really avoid too much. I want to help people. I, I think there's a part of you that's over generous, Olivia. There is a part of me. There is a part. But if you don't have too much to give, too, you have to be careful. Right? So are you careful? So I'm careful. So the I, only I, give, I give from my heart when I can give. Uh, I've given him a lot of heart. <laughs> A lot of fun. So here, here's my, can I give you advice? There's, sure. there's two things we need to do to help you so that you can help Joey. Number one, you have to support him. You have to support him. He's making a lot of mistakes and he's, he's, he's trying, but he's making a lot of mistakes. He needs to want to change because he needs to want to change. Not because you want him to change. Not because his friend, daddy, says it's time for him to be a man and change. That will never work. I want to feed him healthy thoughts. so that Then support him. Well, I thought I had. Maybe I'm a little shy of it in your eyes. Maybe. And I don't know. I only have a few minutes. So, so what do I know? I could be wrong and prove me wrong. That's fine. There's this one song that pertains to him so much. And it, it, I'm just going to give you a little piece of it because... Maybe he'll recognize something. It goes, you're a builder-upper, a breaker-downer, a holder-outer, and I'm a giver-inner. Sad but true, I'm a sapper too, taking it from a taker over like you. Wait, hold on a second. Tell me just the words of that song. The first few, few couple lines. You're a builder-upper. You're a builder-upper. What does that mean to him? What, what, do you, what does that mean to you? What are you saying to him? It means he constantly tells me, I'm going to be paying you back. I'm going to be paying you back. So what is, the, what is the insult you're really giving him? Don't tell me you're supporting him. What did you just say? When you say you're a builder-upper, what are you really saying to him? Do you want to be a builder-upper? Do you want to be a builder-upper? Yeah, I want to build him up. No, I, do you want to be a builder-upper? If I say, yes, Frank, I you're a builder-upper. Builder. Yes. So what's the, what's the positive connotation of that? I don't understand. I want to feed him healthy thoughts. If I want to build him up, you I'm going to feed him. You want to build him up. So you're so saying he he's a builder more upper? Respectable, respectable. Okay, person. so he's saying he's. If you say, Joey, you're a builder upper, that means that he builds you up? No, you're a builder upper and then a breaker downer. In other words, he lifts downer. me up and then he lets me down. I'm trying to say, stay up there, man. Stay up there. Got it. So I was trying to understand. So, because to me, it sounds like an insult. And I want you to. And that's what I was mentioning before is that you give him this. this hardcore like you're doing this wrong you're doing that wrong you're not stepping up and then you tell him something a little bit nice but you're trying I want you here's two things I'm giving you to do Frank because you 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 not Joey 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 I'm working on him too right. it's not obviously about just him and just you I want you to work on yourself and not try to work on him all the time you're constantly trying to work on him two things you can do support the hell out of this man Every time he gets a job, great job, Joey. I'm so proud of you. Every time he pays you 25 bucks, great job, Joey. I'm so proud of you. Every time he says, you know what? I, I went to the job interview and I didn't get the job. Great job, Joey. I'm so proud of you. I believe in you. If you can keep saying that to him over and over again, he's going to want to step up and step into the man that he's meant to be. Not keep going down and, t and down into what you expect him to be and who you expect him to, to always let you down and be the breaker upper. I support him, him I every step him to of the take way. That job where he had to wear a hair That's wanted not him. support. Of course you wanted that. Continuous for him. support. Continuous one day, one day it's good, the next day it's not good. Continual, unconditional support. I'm going to take a few more minutes. This is what you need to do. Everything that comes out of your mouth, you must believe that this is totally unconditionally supportive. If you say, I want you to take that job, but you messed it up, even if you say, oh, but you didn't, you're saying, but you messed up, Joey, again. Just like I thought you would, Joey. You let me down again, just like your song. You let me down again. This is what you keep telling him. He wants to step up for you, but it's never good enough. You're like his father figure. He wants to be that for you, but he's never good enough.
because you shoot them down. Nope, not only two time, things. I feed Hold you on. with healthy things. Though. Is this true? Singing, I do sing. feed you with healthy things. No, but singing the song, you mock me though. It's just now, just a little bit. I'm making the comparison. No, but you build me up. You let me down. You're making fun Frank, of the situation. You can you true. can lie to yourself, but I see it here. The audience at home sees it. Joey, tell me the truth. How does he make you feel? I'm not talking about sometimes. He he he. You know, other than my wife building me up, he's the second support that I have in my life as far as Great. helping me out. Uh, my wife comes first in that, but um, he's also the first one to knock me down. Great. So I'm not saying you don't support him. You support him more than anyone else besides his wife in the world. But then you knock him down. All I'm saying, two things you can do. Number one, support him unconditionally. For the next, if you need 60 days, write on your calendar, did I support him every step of the way? Every step of the way, even when he messed up, because he's going to mess up. He's going to keep gambling. He's going to go lose jobs. But he's going to do better than he was doing before if you keep supporting him. The second thing I want you to do is get totally clear about what do you need him to pay you back so you never hang it over your head. If $25 isn't enough, even though that's progress, it's 100 bucks a month, he will pay you back in 30 some odd months. That's three, three years. I believe. Three, years. three years. That's something. If that's not good enough, you need to tell him, I'm not okay with that. You need to be specific. Joey, what you need to do is you need to pay me 50 bucks a week so that it takes a year and a half. And if that's the case, whatever you say you're okay with, you're okay with it and you never bitch at him about it. Those are your two things. Stick to what you say. Joey, I gave you homework. I said, don't come back unless you're about to cry. What do you got? Read what you have, and I want it to be painful. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not really a fast type around here. But we're, okay, we're, then we're, just tell me what you thought about. You don't have to type it. Um, I was thinking about what would happen if I continue in the, in the downward motion. Yes. We would, would obviously be losing a good friend. Uh, the last thing I want to do is uh, interrupt my family with this whole mess, uh, you know, divorce or anything like that. Uh, Which happens all the time. Yeah, but you're not going to lose me. No, I'm not saying that. I'm wait, saying that I wait. I want him to go to the pain. The fact is, he will lose you. He needs to be present to that fact. You I, will lose him if you continue to sabotage a relationship and you continue to treat him like he's just giving you things and you don't appreciate it, you will lose him. And if you keep telling him you won't, you're enabling him. He needs to believe that what his actions have a consequence. He thinks he can do whatever he wants right now because he doesn't he doesn't associate to the pain. He's also an avoider. An avoider, uh, if you don't sit down and, and, and face the facts, you, your day goes by without even thinking about it most of the time. And everything feels good. It seems like yeah. everything's going So tell good. me what else is painful to you. You might lose a friend. Absolutely, I don't you want will. To, I, we have a happy family right now as far as I'm concerned. And I don't want to mess that up. You know, I, I, what would be the amazing. worst? Now we're going to finish with this. I want to hear your biggest nightmare. I want you to go as painful as you possibly can get. The biggest nightmare, if you were to continue along this path, making excuses every step of the way, and you do, because you're going to give me an excuse, if you continue along the path making excuses every step of the way, and you make excuses to your wife, and you make excuses to your kids, and they learn, oh, the way to get out of something is to make excuses. Dad taught me this. Even though they don't consciously do it, they do it. What is the worst thing that would happen to your family? Think of the absolute worst because of you. Having to move out of the community that we're in now and uh, have my kids start over in different schools and, and maybe be a single parent. You know, uh, a, that's a nightmare to me. I mean, I came from a divorce home. My, my father took off on me when I was younger. I don't want to, them to follow the path that I had. That's a nightmare for me. Um, so every day, Joey, I want you to take full responsibility. If I don't change my ways, I am hurting my family. We will have to leave this community. My kids will grow up believing they can't do anything. They're not good enough. They're going to make excuses along the way. They're going to, every single belief that I have, they're going to adopt. And in 20 years or however old they are, when they're out in the work workforce, they're going to do exactly what I do. They're going to get a job and then they're going to sabotage it. Or they're going to not take one because they think they're too cool or they're afraid of looking like a, an idiot. If you focus on that, your life will change. So as much as you need to focus on the pain and your breakthrough is going to come by associating to all the stuff that could happen, what's going to pull you forward is what, all the pleasure, all the amazing things that will happen when you change. Because I want to acknowledge you. I want to acknowledge you both. And you came here a few weeks ago. We had eight minutes to talk. You, you started to turn your life around. Things started to change. You did things that you had never done before, didn't he? Yeah, I, I was pretty proud of you. We, we never faced the facts before. That's, that, you know, you helped us face the facts. You know, the cards we, were on the table. I never really even knew what he was thinking. Before. I helped you, but you did it. Just like I want you to take responsibility for not doing things, 
Why don't you take responsibility for all the progress that you've made? You guys are still friends. You were at a point where you could have completely ruined your relationship and instead you went and got help. You made it work and you're making such progress. So you know what you need to do. You need to associate to the pain and you also need to think about what life could be like amazing life and how what you could teach your children when you become this amazing man that you are meant to be and do the things that you know will actually benefit them not just for you be the best you for you but be the best dad and be the best husband and be the best person be the best friend and you know the two things that you need to do and I want to acknowledge you for it you're right you do support him and I was hard on you on purpose because I'm just I can see he needs even more support yeah yeah, I'm always there for you. I have to stay back a little bit. You know. So I'm so glad you guys came. I really enjoyed talking. I'm so Thanks. glad you were honest and real. I appreciate And it. to help everyone at home because Good. you're helping people. Thank you. Good. And I appreciate, I appreciate you coming. So thanks again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Can't wait to hear. So after the holidays, let's get back one more time. Sure. And let's see how it goes. I want you making more money. I'm, I, I want you having a job that you feel really like a total idiot if that's what it takes. <laughs> Do whatever it Suck takes. It We're on the Whatever It Takes Network. And I want you just to be supporting him. So he comes back and says, you know what? Frank just supports me unconditionally. So you're watching Financial G-Spot. I'm Robin Crane on the Whatever It Takes Network. I will see you next week. <laughs>